Thank you so much, Pa uh, Sandiuno. So live from Hang Uno Amphitheater, uh, part of the Jakarta campus that come out of your, you know, dedication, your contribution. Uh, this is the class of uh, Blemba 31, Pa Sandi. So uh, and I really appreciate your schedule. You know, you're you're on your way uh, from a, from a trip to Bali. But I remember last semester in the class, uh, also you promised and you even uh, reminded me to invite you again after six months because you were in the, in, in, in the middle of, you know, uh, your struggle to recover the economy and you promised that you want to update the situation after six months. And you do fulfill your promise, Pak Sandi. So everybody, I think let's give an applause for Pak Sandi. So I think without further ado, Pak Sandi, uh, we've been talking about marketing, branding, and screen is yours uh, from you to address us here at Henning Uno Theater about that. And we're going to be open for discussion after that later. Thank you so much. The time is yours. Thank you, Pak Agung and Bu Gita. Uh, on my way from a trip to Bali, which I would like to you guys, uh, even before I report to my team, uh, we are seeing uh, continued recovery. Uh, we're seeing events are being in health uh, with the adherence of health protocol. Uh, we're seeing hotels are now climbing in terms of the occupancy rate. Hotels, restaurants, and cafe are starting to get uh, customers. And not just the uh, foreign tourists, but also domestic tourists, which was the question of Putti earlier. We are marketing to both. Uh, and we, uh, we hope that this momentum continues uh, to really uh, recover the sector that is hard hit by the pandemic, uh, whereby 34 million Indonesians having their livelihood depend on these two sectors. Um, I'd like to acknowledge Pa Yudo Angoro, PhD, the head of MBA department of ITB, Jakarta campus. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, and also Dr. Agung Wijaksono, uh, the lecturer of marketing management and director of Jababeka Academic Committee of SBM ITB Jakarta Campus to host this marketing and branding for nation's recovery and progress. With me, the very own graduates of ITB who is uh, serving uh, as one of the top leaders in the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy, uh, Ibu Martini Muhammad Paham. We call her Diah Paham. She is one of the many Sri Kandis. Uh, we are uh, actually a ministry that have so many women uh, leadership positions. My vice minister is a young woman. My permanent secretary is also a woman. We have 50% of the uh, first echelon are women and top leadership in important decision makers are led by uh, women. So uh, Ibu Dia is a graduate of uh, ITB and she's joining us in uh, this session. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera bagi kita semua. Om Swastiastu, Nama Salam. Budaya. Salam kebajikan, salam sehat, salam Indonesia maju penuh semangat. Peace be upon us. Uh, thank you uh, for again inviting me and it is by grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, that we can gather in this uh, MBA Business Leadership Executive Program 31. Uh, and also, again, uh, six months ago, I was uh, in the session, and there are many unanswered 
questions. And I've uh, asked Baagung to invite me in six months' time to report where we are and to give a report card of the recovery. And I would like to appreciate SBM ITB for a lot in the news lately, hopefully for the good reason. <laughs> and I hope, uh, it's actually, that's a management, um, it's actually a management uh, strategies also. You know what uh, they call that strategy? And I was told uh, earlier by Heng Uno, the, uh, um, the room that you guys, the amphitheater that you guys are in now. Uh, the strategy is called bring it to a crisis. So you have something that is for so long, no solutions. And it's like uh, lingering on and on and on. One way to fix it is to bring it to a crisis. And then the second management strategy is kick it upstairs. No longer your problems. Make it a problem of people at the top. So uh, kick it upstairs and bring it to a crisis have been used in many big organizations, such as where Pa Heng Uno used to uh, give his uh, service for 30 years, which is uh, Chevron and Texaco, uh, which in the old days, it is called Caltex. Now it's called uh, Chevron. So um, I hope uh, you guys will soon find a resolution for, uh, but the two strategies that you guys are deploying have been done by a very skillful uh, group of people and really enjoy the this discourse and the interactions uh, hoping for uh, solutions even bring it to the parliament that's that's really clever so uh, today I would like to talk about wonderful Indonesia uh, as Indonesia tourism brand in the recovery effort of tourism and creative economy sectors. Our focus is to build confidence and gain trust because people have no confidence and have no trust whatsoever uh, during the pandemic in terms of what type of experience and memories they will get. The tourism and economy sectors is the one most impacted sectors by COVID-19 pandemic. And in order to rebuild it, rebuild the 14 million strong tourism sector and 20 million strong creative economy sectors, you need to go back to basic, which is building confidence and gaining trust, telling the travelers, both domestic and international, that the uh, travel activities would not be dangerous, would not be against the uh, uh, health protocol, and it is really essential for us to build confidence and gain trust. This must be done to gain the trust that first, before you talk about foreign tourists, Indonesian tourists, domestic tourists and creative economy industry, it needs to be fully ready to face the new normal. And this new normal are the normal that in, have the health protocol in place and also integrated to the digitalizations uh, through the apps of Peduli Lindungi. Some people joke in the past, this Peduli Lindungi is uh, uh, something that, uh, uh, that we require uh, and they make fun of it. They, there was a video, there was a memes of Pedugi Dudugi have you had Pudugi Dudugi? And it was circling. And I told my friends, also an ITB graduate, uh, Budi Sadikin, if it's really good, it has to go through that type of, uh, you know, bullying. And, you know, I went through political process. When you're good, they, they like to test you out. So uh, every good things have to go through testing. And 
I just got back from the United Nations General Assembly. Pudugi Dudugi also mentioned as one of uh, the game changer for us handling the pandemic. The Paduli Lindungi has uh, really excelled as uh, one uh, tools that were able to build confidence and gain trust. Well, in the effort of recovering tourism and creative economy sectors, I do it the simple way. The 3G, I call it. Three approach. First G, gercep. Kudu gercep, gerak cepat. You need to move fast. Second G, gerak bersama. You need to move together. Chinese proverb says that if you want to go fast, you go by yourself. You go alone. If you want to go far to corners of the world, you go together. So in order to have the recovery, we need to do other than gercep, geber, gerak bersama. And the third is gospel. Garap semua potensi termasuk online untuk ciptakan lapangan kerja. This is basically jobs are being heard due to the pandemic. We lost close to 1 million jobs. So we need to explore all opportunities that we could have to recover those jobs back and add quality jobs. And this year, I'd like to report to Pak Agung, Pak Yudo, that we're on track to create 1.1 million new jobs, 400,000 in the tourism sectors for the G20 and the recovery, and then 700,000 in the creative economy sector uh, in the areas of culinary, fashion, also uh, handicrafts, and many other parts of the 17 subsectors in the creative economy. Um, tourism and creative economy sectors have strategy, and this was uh, implemented early in my tenure. Uh, the first is adaptations. Uh, we need to adapt uh, to the new health protocols, and we implement this protocol called CHSE. We managed to slip in the E at the end, which stands for cleanliness, health, safety, and environmental sustainability. CHSE is the new normal protocol when you do any activities within the tourism and creative economy. Not just products, but services. So all 30 sectors, 13 in the tourism and 17 sectors within the creative economy must follow this cleanliness, health, safety, environmental, sustainability protocol. Second, innovations. If you don't innovate, you will perish. I just got back from Bobo Cabin, Kintamani, whereby the new trend of tourism is more open air, open space. Uh, you're blended with nature. And at the same night, we attended the culture festival in Danau Batur. So blending nature and culture, focusing on quality rather than quantity, and really making a full-fledged effort for sustainability will be the innovations of the recovery for the sectors. We saw the cabin, it's a small cabin. If you want to check, just go to my Instagram this morning at Sandy Uno and you will see small place, but 100% occupancy rate. No joke. They have few um, locations and all registering 80% plus occupancy rate, innovation. And this is something that you need to continue to do uh, as MBA students. One thing that I learned how MBA and many of the MBA students' success lies in their innovative skills. And third, I call it 
not just collaboration, but collabor action. You insert a C between A and T, so it becomes collabor action. And not just within the uh, government, but also involving business, community, government, and media. All of our activities are involving uh, all sectors of the pentahelix because that's the requirement for you to be able to recover. Wonderful Indonesia is Indonesia's tourism brand. Fairly well known by the world. It's actually one of the best brand that the country has uh, and marked by various awards received by wonderful Indonesia on international level. And this reason I was tempted to change the brand. And during pandemic, they said that, oh, it's an old brand. It's so old, you know. But I found through data, focus group discussions, data quantitative uh, that I've been uh, able to obtain that there is no need to recover Indonesian tourism brand. It is already there, but we need to rediscover it because recovery is needed for economic and domestic tourism economy by finding the root of what is wonderful Indonesia. Tourism and creative economy is stimulated by activities and businesses in tourism and the creative economy sectors, which will then create job opportunities and increase the public's income. It's whatever in their pockets. That's what really counts, not just fancy footwork of logo, but it's actually eventually improve the state economy. Activities of the tourism and creative economy it would trigger the employment, would increase job opportunities, increase public income, and eventually improve the state's economy. International tourists also generate foreign exchange and support the state economy, but during pandemic, it's a domestic tourist that carries the burden. It's the backbone of our recovery. Due to COVID-19 pandemic, the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy changed the policy by focusing mainly in the early days on domestic tourists. And we have the big campaign of Wonderful Indonesia with the sub-brand hashtag the Indonesia Aja campaign. Why do you have to go to Turkey, to far-flung places if we have it here at the Indonesia Aja campaign, which we launch and encourage people, hey, go on trips within your own country and move the economy, create jobs, in particular in each tourism destination. So Indonesia Aja has uh, been quite successful because the domestic tourist is now close to baseline of 2019. The domestic tourists really carry the torch. Obviously, by maintaining the CHA, CHSE protocol, cleanliness, health, safety, and, and environmental sustainability, we have this brand called Indonesia Care. Or if you shorten it, it will be I do care. This is to guarantee the safety and comfort during the visits. Besides, the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy have found one particular uh, program which is very, very uh, empowering, which is Desa Wisata Tourism Village Programs. And it supports the government program of marketing and tourism to the bottom of the pyramid. There are 75,000 village of which 7,500 have tourism potential. So we have this Desa Wisata program. But then we said that, hey, when you do tourism, you should not be Rohali. Rohali stands for Rombongan Hanya Liat Liat. You just don't see, see, take selfies, 
admiring the beauty, but you need to buy. You need to change rohali to rojali. Rojali stands for rombongan jadi beli. So we launched this program called Beli Kreatif Lokal. The hashtag Beli Kreatif Lokal have been able to empower this desa wisata to also create a good creative economy products. Meanwhile, in order to support the pandemic, uh, this Beli Kreatif Lokal to buy local creative products is ready to help 500 creative economy actors from culinary fashions, craft in a few areas impacted by the economy uh, downturn. And we have digital promotion strategies. We built sales network. We built synergy with other platform partners like Tokopedia, Gojek, Grab, and we provide assistance in establishing uh, formal legal entity for this micro, small, medium enterprises, including intellectual property rights. And finally, the branding of Wonderful Indonesia cannot be done alone by Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy. And that's why I would ask for 31. Yes, you guys, 31, to join effort and synergy from all elements of the nation is needed under the framework of Indonesia Incorporated. You look at this, all this uh, postings are done by us. Why you have to go to Kapodok Kapadokia? Why do you have to fulfill your dream in Turkey? You can also fulfill your dream in Chiatar. It's my dream, Mas. So I said, why not just it's my dream, Mas? Why not? It's my dream, Kang. It's my dream, Bli. And then it has to be done also in Indonesia. Yeah. And then it's time for us to meet again. It's time for Bali. Tujuh alasan kenapa kamu harus jalan-jalan. So I give all these uh, postings, but you need to amplify it, guys. 31. You need to amplify it because if you don't amplify it, smart people like SBM, ITB, that means I have not been able to mobilize and energize you guys to recover this sector. Five desa wisata, uh, we cover this uh, on a regular basis. One of the efforts to strengthen the brand equity of Wonderful Indonesia is through co-branding partnership. So I've been pushing this co-branding partnership uh, as the effort to increase the Wonderful Indonesia brand. First, Sepeda, biking. Everybody loved biking during the pandemic. So we co-brand with uh, element.id, uh, also with ticket.com. We co-brand uh, with Pagi Pagi. We co-brand with Grab. And we co-brand with many other brands. And we also would like to ask Pagu for co-branding other potential partners as a series of tourism and creative economies, marketing communications activities that are well-planned, structured, integrated, and measurable. Wonderful, wonderful day with Wonderful Indonesia was one of the items that we have also been working. Working with MRT, uh, we have been able to get Pak Willy uh, to co-host some of our activations in the MRT station. Uh, so this is something that we do also. Uh, our social media and com marketing communications campaign are next. Uh, this is something that we want to build, not just the number of followers, but also engagement. So our social, social media accounts is uh, for domestic and international are uh, two separate accounts. At persona.indonesia for Facebook. Uh, at Wonderful Indonesia uh, for international Twitter with Elon Musk there at Persona Indonesia at, and at Wonderful ID. And we have a YouTube channel, uh, very interesting, our YouTube channel, not only uh, uh, lectures uh, for, I'm, I'm sorry, including lectures from the six polytechnic uh, tourism polytechnic institutes that we have across the countries are also being done through our YouTube. Um, 
and then uh, the Instagram at Persona.Indonesia and Wonderful Indonesia, we crossed the milestone of uh, half a million for Instagram. And then we have a very popular TikTok uh, account also at Persona Indonesia and at Wonderful ID. So with that, I would like to close uh, my remarks and uh, pass it back to Pagu. Maybe we have a few questions, but I would like to end with a request that you guys look at this uh, social media accounts and send us one paragraph through your own very uh, uh, your own very alumni Ibu Dia Paham. Send that one paragraph, and the best three paragraphs would win a trip with me to the five super priority destinations oh. of Lake Toba, of uh, Borobudur, of uh, Mandalika, Labuan Bajo, and Likupang. The three best uh, would accompany me and uh, tell me what we're doing wrong, what we're doing okay, and what uh, should we improve. Uh, thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Om Santi Santi Santi. Wa Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yes, pa pa Sandi, thank you so much. I think this is a very not only powerful and, and innovative lake lecture, but also engaging one up to the point that we can be part of the journey where that pa, journey, pa Sandi will do. So thank you so much. So make sure everybody do your best effort for that. And Pasandi, sure, uh, for the invitation to help co-branding, as you know, Java Beka includes uh, one of that is tourist, tourist destination in Tanjung Lesung, Pasandi. So next week I'll be in Tanjung Lesung, and I'll find ways how you know we can support all these uh, co-branding initiative uh, by the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy. And uh, for sure, thank you so much, also Bu Dia, uh, a woman leader. Uh, we have discussed before in this class, now is the role of youth, woman, and netizen, right? So I think this is obvious, uh, uh, an example of how a proud alumni of ITB will be with us. And Pasani, if you allow us, uh, we can have a few uh, question and answer. And I'm sure many of us uh, here would like to have. And I'm going to give, I don't know, how many, how many minutes you have, Pasani, for, for a discussion? I... Um... Up to you, maybe four or five. Four or five, four or five. okay, questions. excellent. Four or five questions. All right, so thank you so much. We have, uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm gonna arrange first the one who are uh, online, yeah? Uh, and I saw first uh, Ellen, Ellen uh, Narisa raised the hands. So Ellen, can you uh, go turn on your, your mic and ask uh, uh, very quick questions to Pasandi? Okay. Uh, thank you, Pak Sandi. Uh, it's an honor for me to be able to have you as our guest lecturer this morning. Uh, I think that my question is, after pandemic, I think we can say that something already changed. And it might be never uh, the same uh, as before, uh, before pandemic, uh, specifically regarding the way of working. Uh, during the pandemic, we realized that uh, some profession can be done remotely. And because of that, Recently, some company has already launched fully remote working. So uh, regarding this topic, I want to know about your opinion and your point of view as Minister of uh, Tourism and Creative Economy and what kind of programs that already planned or done so uh, our country, Indonesia, can take full advantage uh, regarding this phenomenon. I think that's all my question, uh, Pasandi. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Um, Ma, Ma Elan. Well, Thank you, Elan. Uh, let me, yeah, uh, I think the pandemic taught us many valuable lessons. First uh, is that we, uh, we need to be flexible and nimble. We need to make sure that uh, all government programs should be directed to the people, not just uh, uh, a program program just for the sake of having a program, but uh, quality programs. Uh, and this is what the president have been 
pushing uh, all the ministries and agencies uh, to ensure that all programs are, I call it three T's, three T's. The first T is tepat sasaran, tepat manfaat, and tepat waktu. So all of our programs, although our budgets are continuing, you know, Ibu Sri Mulyani likes to uh, uh, really make the government official efficient. So we are now really having less resources, but having the job to reach out to more uh, out there in terms of uh, people that we, we, we want to be able to be touched by our programs. So uh, in the creative economy sectors, our program focus on training, on mentoring, and I actually speak it by experience because I started my business uh, from zero. I was fired from my job. I lost my job and I had to start over and focus on uh, creating a job that uh, started with only three people. Today, uh, the company that I started employ more than 30,000 people across Indonesia. So. I will bring that knowledge uh, and put it in the program of training and mentoring. Uh, and we would like to collaborate also with uh, SBM ITB because some of the startups that we are working, some of the micro, small, medium enterprises would benefit uh, by the help and by the knowledge that you guys could bring into the table. And then we also provide programs that uh, reach out to the uh, marketing as well as uh, we help market uh, SME's products. We help market uh, SME products to the global world. And then we also focus on uh, access to funding, uh, making sure that micro, small, medium enterprises will be able to reach the funding requirement for them to grow. Uh, on the tourism side, we focus on quality and sustainability because the new trend of tourism is personalized, localized, customized, and smaller in size. We need to help businesses to pivot in terms of how not only they will be able to survive this pandemic, but they would also be able to revive and thrive. Events such as G20 are events that are designed uh, to trigger uh, activities and uh, employment generations, job creations in the uh, uh, many of the areas that was so devastated like Bali, like Batam and Bintan. So uh, Elan, uh, I think uh, those programs are uh, ranging from short to medium term program, but the long term program we also doing, for instance, uh, on sustainability. We're changing destinations to handle their waste better. Uh, yesterday, I went to a, a waste uh, a recycling plan whereby we projected that our sectors will reduce the waste to 30% and all the 70% of the waste will be managed on a circular economy basis. That way, uh, our sectors will have a net zero strategy. Water, how do we have the tourism sectors also contribute to the reductions of the need uh, for water uh, uh, in terms of we have better water management. Also new and renewable energies in the uh, uh, tourism and creative economy sectors. When I'm in Bali, I no longer use uh, the uh, normal car, the combustion car. I use the electric car. Uh, when we are uh, having uh, meals with our micro, small, medium, and device, we don't no longer we no longer use plastic-based straws, but we change it to nature-based solutions like uh, purun straw and so on and so forth. So, uh, if you want to talk about the program, uh, I can go on and on, but. Uh, I really like to uh, engage you guys and uh, tell us with this paragraph that I've been uh, given an assignment and how, how do we could do better uh, because I'm sure 
uh, we cannot we cannot do it by ourselves. We have to get uh, other institutions and other organizations to assist us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy, for answering the question to Ellen very innovatively also. Uh, I also noticed pa, how you promoted the straw in the United Nations, you know, an Indonesian product going into the stage of the global. I think it's, it's really amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. And next, uh, I invite uh, Yogi, this time Yogi Fatur Rahim. Yogi yeah. is with Ciputra Development, Pak Sandi, you know, oh, yeah. leading wow. uh, uh, the, the, the brainchild of Pak Ciputra. Yeah, yeah, Pak Ciputra, of course, uh, a guru for every one of us, including to you. So please, Yogi. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Pak. Uh, if, you, if you see here, Pak, uh, I'm the lucky one because everybody in here is like raising the hand. So yeah, lucky. If I may, I have uh, two questions, Pak. Uh, the first question is, uh, because we are talking about the uh, tourism of Indonesia, is about the image of Indonesia. Uh, I want to I want to ask about because now have like the new image of Indonesia as in Borneo, we will move the capital to Borneo. So uh, as we know uh, in Borneo, the development is still like uh, less. How uh, the tour uh, tourism ministry like uh, have a strategy for uh, Borneo? Because like uh, when I was working abroad, everybody's uh, when this happening, like everyone uh, asking about the property in Borneo. How is it? But people in here also like uh, I think it's not ready to move to Borneo, but. Everyone around the world is like ready to investing in Borneo, Pak. But yeah, so uh, my question is like, uh, what is the strategy? Uh, how to promote Borneo like to become like uh, the new Bali, eh, for example? Okay, uh, the question number two, because like, it's from my colleague. Uh, uh, the G20 is an image of Indonesia now. Uh, what is the follow-up from the G20 after, after this, Pak? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Very good question, Yogi. Okay. Yes, please, Masandi. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Yogi. Both are great questions. Um, the IKN or this new capital uh, has been decided and has been made into law. Uh, and we as government officials now have been mandated uh, within our sectors to uh, develop strategies. So with the tourism and creative economy, our focus on ecotourism. Uh, we believe uh, the uh, Kalimantan, uh, in particular East Kalimantan, have so much potential in terms of building uh, ecotourism uh, and also uh, green economies as part of the ecosystems that we will develop the creative economy. Um, I was uh, uh, being updated uh, recently that uh, we could uh, develop as many as 40 desa wisata around uh, the uh, new capital. So that means the uh, idea to make this a very smart uh, green cities uh, would also be supported by community-based tourism. Uh, tourism whereby it's not being uh, dominated by the big uh, destinations, the big spenders, big companies like Chiputra, but also empower local communities. That would be our strategies. And we would be team up, teaming up with the likes of Chiputra and many other property developers. Uh, by the way, Chiputra is my, uh, I, I really idolize him. Uh, Pak Putra has shown great entrepreneurial spirits. Uh, his book that uh, always uh, um, uh, motivates me is, uh, is the story about Anchol, turning sampah menjadi emas, uh, from waste to gold. And that's how they did uh, with Anchol. And I think this is going to be the same for Pak Jokowi turning uh, 
the area of the capital into uh, a showcase of the new Indonesia, whereby Indonesia is uh, green, uh, environmental friendly. We also using technology and we are collaborating with other people. In terms of funding, uh, I, uh, in my sectors, I would only focus maybe 10% funding from government or government related. The 90% funding should come from private sectors, uh, including areas such as connectivity. And then on uh, second questions, uh, uh, on G20, you see this in my logo and the five super priority destination. G20 is uh, together, recover stronger. And this is something that uh, we, uh, it's embedded in our daily lives, Gotong Royong. When you talk about Gotong Royong, uh, it's recovered together, recover stronger. But it also means what's next. After November, we are following with bringing that same message on three pillars of digital transformations, reshaping global health architecture, and green economy on sustainable development uh, would be the, uh, I guess, the pillars that we bring this G20 that not only successful in organizing it, but successful in delivering uh, the resolutions and which we call Bali Communicate. So uh, the next months and years out of G20, I think it will bring uh, substantial fundamental change uh, for uh, the, in, in particular for my sectors in the tourism and creative economy. We just started a tourism working group in Labuan Bajo. And we also invite uh, interventions and uh, inputs from academia. Uh, and we'd like also for you guys to to be involved in this G20. We have six side events. Um, the Indonesia Wellness Tourism uh, Conference and Health. Uh, I think there's a questions in the chat about the medical tourism. Yes, this is something that we're going to grow. Uh, AVPN, Asian Venture Philanthropic Network is the uh, uh, blended finance uh, type of uh, funding, uh, creative economy and tourism. Uh, we are, and also social uh, enterprise and social entrepreneurs. Uh, the third, we will hold the World Tourism Day uh, in September and in October is a World Conference on Creative Economy. So, uh, and we're gonna go on a roadshow uh, to ensure that the G20 events and side events will, will deliver uh, impact directly to the people in the bottom of the pyramid. So uh, again, this is something ongoing and uh, I hope you could uh, be part of it as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again, Pastor Sandy, for uh, answering that and also answering the topic about medical uh, tourism. Yeah. So, and next I'm gonna give the opportunity for uh, somebody who's from 31B. Anyone in the room who are 31B? If, online. Okay, so is Susan, Susan Ananda? Yes, Susan, can I ask you to comment, Ibu Doctor? Yes? Yeah, Pak Agung, thank you, Pak Agung. Oh, Susan is a doc medical doctor, Pak, and a director of a hospital. Please, Susan. <laughs> Good afternoon, Pak Sandy. Uh, I really want to say, uh, in the beginning, I would like to say thank you, uh, because right now, uh, my hospital is also joining the health tourism uh, board and uh, recently promoted in Indonesia. Well, uh, from your slide, I was asking, uh, what is your opinion about the health tourism in Indonesia? And is there any a specific part of your program for the health tourism in Indonesia? Because uh, from my opinion, the health tourism is really promising uh, for Indonesia because uh, I'm very confident that uh, our uh, healthcare is the same as good as uh, other hospitals around the world. Uh, thank you, Pasanji. Thank you, Ibu Susan. Um, and thank you for uh, uh, 
developing uh, medical tourism. Uh, this is something that uh, really happening even in my own family. Uh, as uh, we know that uh, we have 11 billion US dollar a year, 11 billion US dollar a year uh, flown out of Indonesia for uh, Indonesians uh, getting medical attentions, even such a small thing like medical checkup to places like Singapore, uh, Thailand, and Malaysia. Uh, and the medical uh, tourism uh, have uh, four pillars of it. Uh, the first one is health tourism. Uh, somebody already mentioned that we're building hospitals in Bali uh, and other parts of uh, the country uh, in order to cater for be be better health services. And then we have wellness tourism. And this is something that we are very strong, wellness tourism, the jamu, the promotive preventive, uh, the spa, and many other uh, aspects of being well, because it is much cheaper and much easier of staying well by promotive preventive programs, uh, such as if you uh, exercise regularly or you get uh, good vitamins and supplements. Uh, and uh, wellness tourism is something that we are pushing uh, very strongly because we have that ingredient very, very strong in, in our culture. The third is the um, uh, mice uh, related medical conferences, uh, huge, gathering of doctors, nurses. Uh, we uh, want to make Bali and other centers in Indonesia uh, the places whereby medical professionals go on uh, conferences to uh, broaden their knowledge, uh, upskill and reskill uh, them. So uh, this uh, three uh, parts of medical tourism is is going to be the focus. And then we believe also that uh, we're going to change the landscape. In the past, we tried to prevent people from going abroad for uh, getting from tourism activities or medical uh, tourism. But now I said that it's time to collaborate. We can continue to compete, compete with Singapore, with Malaysia, but we forgot to collaborate. As ASEAN uh, chair of the tourism forum, I invited them to invest here because some of the uh, medical activities could be uh, better uh, delivered here in Indonesia uh, and for the complex, uh, more complex medical uh, works. It, it could be in other centers, but Indonesia would be good for instance, in terms of uh, early uh, diagnosis for some uh, kind of disease. So uh, we are inviting them to invest because uh, this is how we think we could uh, collaborate uh, better going forward rather than forcing Indonesians to not uh, getting medical treatments uh, outside Indonesia. So yes, this is something that is very big and thank you Ibu Susan and others to uh, bring it up. And also there's a question in the chat uh, about, uh, uh, this is something that relates to, if I'm not mistaken, um, on the culture of people. Uh, and this is from Ting Eka in communities, Desa Wisata program actually address this issue that you need to ensure the uh, local wisdom, local cultures are being uh, respected, are being referenced and actually practiced. I visit Wairabo, I visited so many Desa Wisata whereby I learned that Indonesia is so rich by culture and traditions. So 
the picture of uh, this Russian tourist taking in the village in Tabanan is actually part of a problem, but also part of a homework for us in terms of telling the people, socializing and educating them that it's not okay for you to post nude in front of a, a, a tree. And actually, many of them don't know that it's forbidden. So it's our job also to educate these tourists, these traders, newcomers about local practices, traditions, and values. And for, pa, uh, for PAECA, I think it's all our jobs because Indonesia is so diverse. And anything, if you don't treat it well, could be a point of divisions among us. But if we are open-minded, we tell them, okay, this is not just the problem, not just kicking them out of the country or out of a region, but rather educating them in terms of how you blend in to the local culture and traditions. So uh, maybe we could do it much better. Uh, there's one question from Ranga that is very interesting also, Pagu. What yes. are your plans uh, regarding easing COVID protocol? This is something that I speak with Pabudi a lot. Uh, we're going to see what um, the result uh, three weeks after the Lebaran holiday. If we don't see uh, a spike in number of new cases, hopefully we would be able to uh, implement uh, other easing um, or lessening the requirements or uh, getting the health protocol, for instance, the PCR tests of people coming into Indonesia, uh, the uh, maybe change to antigen and some of the guidance in terms of PPKM. Uh, this is still uh, in, uh, in progress. So stay tuned and hopefully uh, you would be able to hear from us first. Uh, thank you also for gastronomy uh, on Hollywood uh, and point. Breaking up. Yeah. Sorry, Pasandi, I think we were. And also from Meta. Okay, I have good signal here. It's. Uh, we are. It's, it's hopefully. No, it's, no, you're back. No, you're back, Pat. You're back. Okay. Sorry, we are uh, uh, also developing World Indonesia or uh, Wonderful Indonesia first as part of our metaphors and um, uh, yeah, we, um, uh, movies, uh, you talk about crazy rich uh, Asian movie. We have uh, Kaka yes. and Lidia Sapanari, which is sold out in, uh, yes. in Singapore and Malaysia. And it's not even, uh, uh, it's not even three weeks and they have already reached 5 million. We, we, we're losing you, Pak Sandi. Uh, you're freeze. Sorry, Pak Sandi, we're, I think we're, we're, we're losing your connection. Just wait for a while, yeah? Viewers. Uh, okay. This will translate. I'm sorry, I'm back. Yes, you're back, Pa. Uh, we we can hear you again. Yes. Sorry, maybe this is an area that is uh, challenging in terms of digital coverage. So it's up, my up. job also. That ha happens after Desa, Desa Penari, Pa. That happens after Desa Penari. <laughs> So, uh, yes, we are using movies to promote uh, areas such as 
Tsao, Laskar Pelangi, Transform Belitung, and uh, uh, also uh, culinary experiences. Uh, and this this uh, Penari uh, is now having a, a small mini theme park in FX. Uh, we uh, we just visited the small theme park. Uh, it's like a haunted house. Uh, but then they uh, in Alas Purwo, I think they will create um, this imaginary desa to be something of a tourist destination. So yeah, I think uh, the use of movies, films will be uh, uh, we will use a lot to promote uh, tourist destinations. And I think one final thing on palm oil. This is interesting, which is not my field but I used to invest a lot in palm oil. We sold uh, palm oil from our portfolio, uh, my companies in 2015. You know what happened, Pa Agung? Why I, I sold uh, my portfolio on palm oil is because my daughter, second daughter is very environmentalist. Wow. She was the one forcing us no longer to eat shark fin soup, uh, the um, uh, what other delicacies like uh, uh, this uh, goose liver um, and uh, foie gras, yeah? goose liver that uh, is cruel to the animal. Uh, and one day she uh, she came to me and I said, "Then uh, uh, talk about palm oil." So I explain the palm oil industry that is uh, basically more sustainable going forward and but I lost that battle uh, she already uh, have the uh, conviction that palm oil is bad so we need to do much better communications in terms of how palm oil uh, in, in particular the sustainable way of palm oil I have a friend who's started a business two years ago monitoring palm oil plantations for the risk of peat soil combustions and fires that company two years ago is now worth 50 million us dollar what they do is just to install cctv and connecting it to satellites and inform better uh, management in terms of combating fires so this should be business opportunities. And at the same time, it also would be something to not by saying, but by doing, com campaigning by doing something to promote sustainable uh, practice in our palm oil industry. So maybe with that, I uh, would like to pass back to Pa Agung uh, as I'm now having to move to the other sessions. Uh, thank you very much again for having us uh, in this uh, sessions and please uh, follow with Ibu Dia uh, Paham, a graduate of ITB for the assignment uh, of having this paragraphs uh, inputs on our uh, marketing and branding exercise. Um, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the five super priority destination. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Pak Sandi. Applause, a very big applause to Pak Sandi.